the infrastructure madman made another big move. China has built a 2,200 kilometers Beijing to Taiwan high-speed railway across the Taiwan Strait, paving the way for Taiwan to go home. Let's take a closer look in this video. Not long ago, the appearance of a piece of news instantly ignited all the enthusiasm of Chinese netizens. In the National Comprehensive Three-Dimensional Transportation Network Planning Outline issued by China, there is an extra branch line from Fuzhou to Taipei on the railway from Beijing to Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. The planning period is from 2021 to 2035. What is going on? Is the way to go home in Taiwan finally opened? Taiwan province is a province of China. Surrounded by the sea, it is composed of Taiwan Island and its affiliated islands. Among them, Taiwan Island is the largest island in China, with an area of 36,192.855 square kilometers. Between Taiwan Province and mainland China, there is a Taiwan Strait about 400 kilometers long, with an area of about 90,000 square kilometers and a maximum width of 400 kilometers. The Taiwan area is located at the junction of the Pacific Plate, so the collision between the plates makes the area frequent earthquakes. On average, hundreds of earthquakes occur every year. Also due to the earthquake, the seabed terrain of the Taiwan Strait is complex and uneven. The water depth in the southern area of the strait is 70 to 160 meters, the water depth in the northern area is 60 to 80 meters, and the southwest area has a gully with a maximum water depth of more than 1,000 meters. Not only that, the climate of Taiwan is divided into two different climate zones based on the north-south boundary. The south has a tropical monsoon climate, while the north has a subtropical monsoon climate. Therefore, under the influence of this special climate, Taiwan is often hit by typhoons in summer. At the same time, the appearance of a typhoon will bring huge swells on the sea surface, and when the swells and tides are added together, a more destructive wave will be formed, which will pose a considerable threat to ships and offshore facilities. If a bridge is built in the Taiwan Strait for the construction of a high-speed rail, it will inevitably be affected by strong waves, so one can imagine how difficult it will be. But even so, in the face of China's strong infrastructure strength, these are trivial matters. In the face of these difficulties, Chinese experts have given several plans to infer the possibility of the successful completion of the Beijing to Taipei railway line, among which three plans have been initially planned, south, north and central. First of all, let's talk about the southern line plan. The overall length of the scheme is about 243 kilometers. Its starting point is Xiamen City, Fujian Province, then passes through Kinmen, Penghu, and finally arrives in Chiai, Taiwan. Followed by the Northern Line Program. The overall length of the scheme is about 130 kilometers. According to the plan, it will start from Pingtan Island in Fucking City, Fujian Province, which is the closest place from the mainland to Taiwan Province. As long as the bridge crosses the Taiwan Strait, it can reach Xinchu, Taiwan. At the same time, according to the past regional history, it is not difficult to find that the sea area passed by this line has not experienced a strong earthquake. Nowadays, the seismic activity in this area is generally around magnitude 5, and the frequency is relatively low. Finally, there is the midline plan, which is somewhat special. It is divided into two types. The first construction plan is to start from Hushur Town, Putian City, Fujian Province, go to Nanri Island, cross the Taiwan Strait, and go to Miaoli, Taiwan. The line is about 147 kilometers long. 
The second construction plan is to cross the Taiwan Strait from Jinjiang City, Fujian Province, and reach Nantou, Taiwan. The line is about 236 kilometers in length. Each of the three schemes has its advantages and disadvantages. Among them, the most obvious advantage is the Northern Line Plan. From the point of view of the data alone, the Northern Line Plan is the shortest construction mileage among the three plans, and the sea area from Pingtan Island to Shinchu has a good environment with an average water depth of about 60 meters, which is of great help in reducing construction and later maintenance costs. At the same time, we also said just now that there will be no large-scale earthquakes on this line, which greatly improves the safety of the project. At this time, we will look back at the middle line plan and the south line plan. First of all, the two middle line plans are located in the seismic zone of the Taiwan Strait, where earthquakes occur frequently. No matter during construction or after construction, high-frequency earthquakes will greatly threaten bridges and other buildings. Of course, it also has its advantages, that is, it can use the central mountain range of Taiwan Island to resist typhoons. Followed by the Southern Line Program. The construction mileage of this scheme is the longest among the three schemes, and a longer construction mileage represents an increase in cost and an extension of the construction period. At the same time, the Southern Line Plan is located in the deep water area of the Taiwan Strait, where the water depth can reach more than 100 meters, which will undoubtedly increase the difficulty and risk of construction. And its advantage is that the economies of the regions it passes through are relatively developed, and if it is completed, it can further improve the economies of both sides of the strait. Finally, based on the consideration of various factors, the Northern Line Plan with relatively high safety, low construction difficulty and short construction mileage was determined as the final plan. In addition, Chinese experts revealed that at present, China tends to plan and build roads and railways for dual use, so that cars can travel together and railways can connect with the railway system in Taiwan. The reason why the Northern Line Plan can be determined as the final plan is that in addition to the three advantages mentioned above, it also has an incomparable advantage over other plans, that is, the Pingtan Strait Highway and Rail Bridge. The Pingtan Strait Road and Rail Bridge is China's first sea crossing road and rail bridge, and it is also the world's longest straight crossing road and rail bridge. It has a total length of 16.34 kilometers and is divided into upper and lower floors as a whole. The lower layer is designed to be a double lines and first class railway with a speed of 200 kilometers per hour, while the upper layer is designed to be a two ways and six lanes expressway with a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. The total investment of the project is as high as 14.7 billion yuan. After completion, it can ensure the safety of vehicles under the 10th level of wind and can withstand the earthquake of the 8th level or above. The completion of the Pingtan Strait Highway and Railway Bridge has also solved a lot of troubles for the Northern Line Plan, leaving only the Shinchu High Speed Railway section and the Sea Crossing Channel that have not yet been built. First of all, we need to know that the Sea Crossing Channel to be built in the Northern Line Plan is hundreds of kilometers long, and the average water depth is about 60 meters. Therefore, only conventional ground tunnels can be built. After considering many factors such as driving, ventilation, safety rescue, maintenance, etc., every 40 kilometers or so, the formation tunnel still has to have a ventilation and entrance shaft. However, from Nyoshan Island in Pingtan to Shinchu, Taiwan, there is no island on the entire 120 kilometers of sea, 
so at this time we can only start with artificial islands. In most people's minds, land reclamation is simply throwing rocks into the sea to accumulate them, but is this really the case? Actually not. If people do this, the water will quickly wash away the stones, and the efficiency of the entire land-making plan will be greatly reduced. Therefore, if people want to build an artificial island, what they need to do is to trap a piece of sea area first, drain the water inside and then fill it with soil. In addition to the natural island of Nyoshan Island that can be used at the beginning, at least two artificial islands must be built for the remaining 120 kilometers of Taiwan Strait Passages. The entire project cost may reach 300 to 400 billion yuan, and if it is finally completed, it will be the world's top super project. Once the Beijing to Taiwan high-speed railway is open to traffic and the two sides of the Taiwan Strait are connected together, everyone must be aware of its significance. In addition to enabling substantial economic growth on both sides of the strait, it also symbolizes that Taiwan province has opened a home road. At that time, when the high-end manufacturing industries on both sides of the strait communicate with each other and stimulate each other's growth, the strength of China's high-end manufacturing industry will surely rise to a new level. At that time, it is estimated that no country in the world would dare to easily wrestle with China. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.